Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. We've got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, we got anonymous coaches. They're talking about Michigan, and they're talking about how different they are now, and uh, not in the most positive manner. Also, Kirby got flipped off, <laughs> and we're going to talk all about these stories. And this is flip season, so we'll get into all that. Now, let's start out with this Michigan story and these anonymous coaches. And this is on The Athletic by Bruce Feldman. It says, Big Ten coaches predict tough battle for Wolverines in the uh, semifinal. And college football coaches uh, spoke to The Athletic for a scouting report, and they're convinced Michigan hasn't been the same since the NCAA investigation became public. One of the coaches said they're different now, said it makes a huge difference to know when blitzes are coming, so when you pick it up, you can really attack it. After that investigation and resignation of staffer Connor Stallions, they weren't always in the right place at the right time. Yeah, that's there's some uh, anger there. I can go ahead and promise you. If you'll remember, uh, when all this came out, all the coaches uh, met with the commissioner, and they were yelling and screaming at him to do something about it when he uh, actually suspended him for three games. And you can see a difference, you know, their their offense, and they're just they're not quite as clicking as they were, but you know they're still winning. Now I think this is going to be an incredibly tough ball game against Alabama. Michigan's not played a team like Alabama. The speed, the athleticism. I mean, Ohio State's a good team. Don't don't get me wrong on that, but they played them at home, and Ohio State's quarterback had a poor game. That's not going to happen, I don't believe, with uh, Jalen Milrow. He's playing at his best level, and, and he's running great. You know, he's fully healthy now. When we played him, he had a hamstring issue. That's my opinion, based on how he ran. He's running full speed now, so it's going to be real tough for them to stop Alabama. So the Athletic interviewed 10 Big Ten coaches. And, of course, they were granted anonymity to provide candid observations. They mused as to whether the decline in J.J. McCarthy's production since the NCAA invest investigation became public was due to the sign stealing or lack thereof. And then there's also discussion that it could be injury. Uh, McCarthy threw 14 touchdowns in the first seven games, and he's only thrown five touchdowns in the last six. It says it does make you wonder, one of the defensive analysts whose team faced Michigan last month, said going into our game, I thought he was uh, among the best in the country. Afterward, I didn't think the same. Once all the stuff happened, he just didn't look the same. I don't know if he was hurt. I thought he was a Heisman candidate. Heisman quarterbacks don't throw only eight passes in a game. So there was obviously didn't feel like he was playing that well. He said he seemed out of sync lately. So they're basically saying without Connor Stallions, he's not the same. Now, there is word that he is injured or not 100%. Now, he might be by the time he plays Alabama. But uh, I believe there is a leg injury there. So that may be part of it. The other part of it is, yeah, they may not have the signs. You know, that's what the, uh, that's what the coaches think. At the Big Ten, they think that uh, they had the signs and that's why they played so well. And they look, they were boat racing teams up until uh, the whole Connor Stallions thing. So, look, we're going to have a great test. Alabama's probably the toughest team they can go up against other than maybe Texas. So they're going to have to earn it. And if they win a natty under these circumstances, a oh, good grief. You want to talk about a mess. It is going to be something. And for the Michigan fans out there, I don't blame you for being happy, man. I, Y'all need to go for it. That's what you should do. Even if it gets vacated, honestly, at this point, so what? You might as well just stick with the guy through the end of the year at least and see how this plays out. And, you know, I'm not going to blame a fan base for rooting for their team. Y'all didn't have anything to do with these signs being stolen and all that crap. That was done uh, outside of your knowledge, that's for sure. Whether or not it was outside the coach's knowledge, you know, we don't know yet. But it really doesn't matter because if it happens under your watch, you're still going to be held responsible. But you can see here, I mean, all these coaches are saying the same thing. They think the sign stealing played a big role. And it's going to be a tough game. I can tell you, I can't believe it. I'm going to be rooting for Alabama. Partly because they're SEC, partly because I just don't think Michigan deserves it this year. Now, long term, I'm not going to root against Michigan long term. I don't have any issue there other than what's happened in the last couple of years. I, I totally disagree with that. So I will be rooting for Alabama, and I think most of the nation will, which is really rare. <laughs> Normally, Alabama doesn't have a whole lot of uh, fans out there outside of their state because everybody's sick of them winning so much. But in this case, I think about 90% of folks are going to be rooting for uh, Alabama, which is kind of weird. Now let's talk about Kirby Smart and their number one rated quarterback they had committed for six months, who has now flipped to Nebraska. And that's Dylan Rayola. He flipped his commitment just uh, in the last 24 hours. He's going to play at Nebraska, which is a huge get for Nebraska. they got to be so pumped. He's the number two player in the class of 2024. 
number one pro style quarterback. His dad played for Nebraska. He's got an uncle that uh, coaches there as an offensive line a coach. And here he is on X, go big red on his uh, Twitter account. And there was a lot of talk about uh, him flipping. Now, uh, Georgia got a huge uh, bunch of news. And I think Carson Beck probably timed this because once he flipped, I think uh, Carson Beck said, man, I'm going to give Georgia Nation some good news that he's coming back. And I think he should come back. And I think he'll be paid well. He was going to probably be the fifth quarterback taken in the NFL draft. I think he can up that because he's a very good quarterback. And he's going to be tough. The, Georgia will make the playoff next year. They do have a very tough schedule, though. They've got like six tough games. This last year, they had about two. So anyway, I don't think – here's the bad thing. It's one thing if the player waits to the last minute to flip. That sucks. But if it's a quarterback, it's ten times worse because you're going to keep recruiting safeties and linemen and offensive linemen and running backs. But once you get a five-star quarterback, you're not going to go after any more five-star quarterbacks because you got your guy. Then at the very last minute, he flips, and you've lost six months of recruiting where you could have brought another five-star in. And Georgia probably would have. So I'd say Kirby Smart is not real happy with uh, Dylan. Once again, things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! Yeah, yeah, he should have told him yesterday or about six months ago. So that that's the thing about quarterbacks. They need to take into consideration the responsibility that they hold because their position is kind of rare in football. It's not like you're going to be subbed out constantly. So if you commit and you wait to the very last minute, you're really creaking a team. It's just a fact. Now, I think Georgia can handle it, but I, I, Kirby's not going to be happy. I'll promise you. He'll never hold real positive feelings about this kid because it, it just kind of stinks. But you know what? 18-year-old kids do what they're going to do. But here's the thing. Kirby's got two natties. He's uh, making about $10 million a year. I think he's going to be okay. Now let's talk about a five-star that flipped from Florida to Texas. And that's Xavier uh, Filsamy. And Texas uh, did pick up a big-time safety. And he had been committed to uh, Florida for quite a while. But there's been a lot of talk that he might very well flip. He's originally from Texas, and that obviously played a role. And also, uh, Florida had fired their uh, defensive backs coach. So they went a couple of weeks without that. So that kind of made it tricky, too. He announced on December 8th that he is flipping his commitment from Texas to Florida. He's actually the number two safety recruit in the nation. Big time five star. And here you see uh, where, where Hayes Fawcett, Xavier tells me he has flipped from Florida to Texas. And let's see what that did for Texas. That, that brought them up to number five, and that dropped uh, Florida down to number 10. They've still got two five stars, one of which is their quarterback. There's another fella. There's actually two fellas there. One's a real high four star, another's a five star that they're not 100% sure is going to stick. So Florida's really, they're, they're taking a beating right now, and it's, it's not good. And this is something that Billy Napier was really hanging his hat on. You know, after two losing seasons in a row, six and seven, then five and seven, everybody was kind of hanging on this recruiting class. And it was number three for a long time. Now it's number 10. If they lose another guy, it's probably going to drop down to around 15th. And that's, you know, that's very unfortunate for them. It's still going to be a totally decent recruiting class, but not what they were hoping for. And lastly, we're going to talk about Jordan Seaton. He's talking about flipping, of all people, after everything that he's done. His commitment to Colorado is in doubt. Said uh, a lot of folks were wondering if perhaps the nation's number one offensive tackle was trolling fans or simply having some fun by leaving Colorado off his list and then, uh, then chose them. So it turns out college football fans are again wondering if Seton's just having fun or if there's a major shakeup. Here's what Jordan Seton put on, uh, on X, and it shows where he's trying to decide, <laughs> which, jeez, this guy. He obviously likes the drama. Now, as you know, it looked like Tennessee was probably going to get him. They offered him a heck of a deal, NIL money. My understanding, it was seven figures. And he turned it down and chose Colorado, probably similar money. But Tennessee would have been a much better choice for him, obviously, a team that's really on the verge of uh, making that playoff. And I don't see Colorado doing that anytime soon. And it wasn't much fun when he went on Undisputed, and Colorado wasn't even on the list. And he had, he had quite a bit of fun with that, uh, with that announcement. But anyway, it sounds like we'll find out. He, who knows? He may decide, hey, I need some more attention. I may not even uh, uh, sign tomorrow. You know, of course, everybody's going to be signing on the 20th, which is tomorrow. And we'll find out a lot about this, uh, about these classes and how everybody's going to shake out. But look, it can tomorrow I expect some more flips. And there might be some five stars and real high four stars that flip. Very interesting. So I did want to cover all those stories today. 
I, as you can tell, I'm not 100%. Uh, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to do a show. I was in urgent care earlier getting medicine and all that kind of stuff. But um, I did manage to uh, get this uh, show in. Oh, I wasn't quite as sick as I made out. But yeah, it was touch and go for a little while. But anyway. Uh, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover my vols, the SEC, and everything that's going on in the NCAA. If you've not subscribed, it's on your right, my left. Hit this little button right here. Costs you nothing. Helps you get my videos. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.